Hi guys, welcome to Digital Tech Join. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about connecting to cloud database and we will be using ASP.NET MVC application. We are going to create the following three action items and we are going to learn about following three aspects. First is we are going to create a database in AWS cloud platform. We are going to create a MS SQL database that is Microsoft SQL Server database and then we are going to see how to connect from our local PC to the cloud database using MS SQL client tool and then finally we are going to create a small ASP.NET MVC application connect to the cloud database and fetch the data or records and display it in a view so let's get started we will now go back to our AWS management console and first create a database so I've logged it to my AWS management console if you guys have not watched my videos on how to create a free tier account I recommend that you go ahead and watch those videos because I'm using a free tier and um, there's no charges because I just opened and activated my free tier account so in my series playlist on AWS uh, certification and cloud computing tutorials I've covered how to create a free tier account how to set up a billing alerts and how to inst create an instance on the server and along with all the series I've created a special playlist for how to work with Amazon simple storage service that is S3 so coming back to our topic now since I've logged into my console I will click on services and select view all services and say view all services so basically I'll be able to see all the AWS services now in order to create a database we will go under the header database and we get a lot of options over here I'm going to select RDS remote database service so once I click on RDS it will redirect to me to the RDS console page where I will be able to select the database that I wish to create now here on the left hand side you can see the options provided and on the right hand side you can see the number of database instance now currently there is no instance created so in order to create a database I'll click on the databases here I'm going to click on the button create database create database page will provide me the option first to create a standard database or to create an easy create so a standard database a standard create will allow me to select each and every options or create new ones and then provide the option to finally create a database however in a easy create the most of the settings are by default picked up by AWS and it will create the database based on the current configuration you have logged into the account so basically easy create is as the name implies it creates a database very easily with, without providing much inputs now if you scroll down below so you get the options of various engine types so basically engine options are nothing but the database so which database you could like to create on the cloud or on AWS platform for example we can see there are six types of database engine one is Amazon Aurora MySQL MariaDB PostgreSQL Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server here in this tutorial I am going to select Microsoft SQL Server now Please note I have selected sta standard create and selected Microsoft SQL Server then I get an option of database management type so I'm going with Amazon RDS which includes a fully RDMS database then we get an option to select the edition edition is nothing but the versions like for example you want to go with Express edition or uh, web edition standard or enterprise for this tutorial I'll be happy to select SQL Server Express Edition then we have different version types we can select the different version type depending upon the name I'm selecting this the one which is already default selected then this is a important setting that you need to do under the settings we have DB instance database so this is database hyphen one which is the instance of your database you can change it and create any name so I say digital tech join db instance so this becomes my instance name then this is your username that is master username I keep it as admin 
and I provide the password. So I provided the password and your password should match the requirement of uh, certain characters and and values which is mentioned over here then you have something called burstable classes that is depending upon the load the cpus and the rams can be increased right now we just select as it is then there's a storage type so we have general purpose storage type and provision and magnetic so we select general purpose and we allocate 20 gb which is the default then there is storage storage like auto scaling and uh, depending upon the threshold the auto scaling will work then there is connectivity which is uh, again an important parameters like whether you want your database to be connected via ec2 instance or you want it to connect directly so so here it's by default don't connect to ec2 compute engine or connect to ec2 compute engine so when you say commit connect to ec2 compute engine then you'll have to select the ec2 instance or create new ec2 instance so create new ec2 instance is like creating a server i have a video already published on my channel that create and uh, that uh, tells you what exactly is ec2 instance and how to create a linux and windows ec2 instance on aws so right now i'm selecting do not connect to ec2 instance then we have the network type ip4 by default and then very important the virtual private cloud this is a default vpc which is on internet when i say default vpc which is on internet means it has a internet gateway attached to this vpc that enables outside uh, connection connectivity to your database then we have the uh, default uh, db subnets and whether you want a public access yes in this case we want a public access because we want to connect from a local database using sql client then we have the vpc security group so security group is nothing but uh, the incoming and the outgoing rules so by default it is selected the default one and then we have whether you want your sql server windows authentication right now i provided the username so i don't require then we have the monitoring inside if you wish to enable monitoring so the logs and everything will be stored and you can see that and then we have the aws key for security right now leaving it as it is and there's some additional configuration which uh, is default and like backup and everything and finally once you select all the parameter you get a def you get an estimated monthly cost which you can see 44 or 45 usd dollars now this is how you create a database or microsoft sql server database using the standard create option where you have to explicitly define each and every parameters and it also gives you the computed estimated cost now we will select easy create and we will actually create a database uh, using the easy create in this tutorial so i select easy create i select microsoft sql server and now i get an option to set to select the free trial account so we have three blends one is product uh, production dev and testing and then the free tier and go with the free tier account then the database instance i have actually changed it remains the same then admin and my password okay and then you see these all settings i didn't have to provide because it is taken by default it is taken the default vpc it is there uh, it is um, whether it's public and really accessible what is a code everything is default taken by aws that is that is why easy create uh, will quickly create a database by just providing the inputs like whether you want a free tier or a production the instance and the password rest all setting will be selected by aws let's click on the create now So you see the database uh, instance creators currently it is uh, creating it takes around uh, seven uh, seven to eight minutes to create that instance once the database instance is uh, connected we will edit it and make some changes in the parameter that will enable us to connect to this database instance through our client so we will wait till the database is created 
So now you see our database is created. You see the instance name which I had given digital tech join instance. And then this is an instance and this is the engine that is SQL Server Express Edition our region where we have created the database. The size is T2 micro since this is a free tier and status is available with the CPU utilization, current activity, maintenance and the VPC, the virtual private cloud. Okay, so now I will select this and I'll modify, go to the modify button and click on modify. So I am going to make some changes in the configuration. The most important changes which I am going to do is that I want to make this database instance available on internet. That means I should be able to connect the instance. Okay. So here we have the settings that is the database instance and the master password which I gave. Okay, so now here I am going to make certain changes. For example, I don't wish to do an auto scaling. So I untick this because for the tutorial, I don't require to enable any storage or auto scaling. And as I told you, for easy create, all these options by default were set. And that is the reason we were able to create the database by providing only the DB instance and the master password. Then we have the security group and we will check the security group in a short while. Uh, and this is a default security group that allows you the port 1433 by default and uh, incoming port. And if you want, you can change it. Then we uh, then this is Microsoft SQL Server Windows authentication, which is unticked. Then we have database options, and then we have a backup. So, so I untick this copy tags with snapshot, and um, then as and go further and I can see there is a maintenance enabled so I untick this because I don't want any uh, option that uh, enables maintenance then I click on the additional configuration your additional configuration and we should be able to see a option that says whether you want to connect your database from connectivity yeah so we have this connectivity over here and we click on additional configuration and here this is publicly accessible so my database is publicly accessible by default in case if this is enabled if this is not publicly accessible is enabled in your case make sure that you click on publicly accessible here you can define the port i am keeping it as default port but i will tell you if you want to change the port then that how do you connect to your client even that will be covered in the next step so this is our database our database instance is ready so we click on continue and now in a next step we are going to actually connect our database instance using our client so for that i have already got my sql server studio management installed and i open that So in Microsoft SQL Server Management, in order to connect to any database, whenever I click on file and say connect to object browser, I get this window where I'm supposed to connect to the database engine, where I'm supposed to provide you the server name and what type of authentication is required, whether Windows or SQL Server authentication, and then provide the username and password. Now in order to connect to our database that is created in AWS, MS SQL Server database instance. Let's go ahead and pick up those parameters that are required to connect a database. First is the server name, the username and password. So I will go back to my console here in AWS. And if you click on databases, you can see my databases over here. And prior to this, if you have, you have come back to your home page and if you wish to go back to database, as I explained, you need to search for RDS and then click on RDS and when you click on RDS it will redirect you to the database pages and here you can see the instance I click on the instance you see my database instance is running and I select it and I click on mod, um, the click on the database instance and here I can see all the information that I had used to set up this database here in, you can see there is something called connectivity and security and here there is an endpoint and the port. So this endpoint you need to copy. I copy this endpoint. Port is 1433. 
So I come back to my SQL client. I paste this instance endpoint over here under the server name. So this becomes my instance where digital tech joint DB is my instance. Then this is the AWS code, and then we have the entire string which represents the server name. Now in this case, the default connectivity of SQL Server is one port is one four one four three three, and if you wish or if you have configured your database port to some other uh, number, then you need to provide comma. You need to enter comma and provide that port number. In my case, I say one four three three. The username, if you remember, I had kept as admin, and then I'll give the password. So I'm entering the password which I entered over there. Okay, so these are the things required to connect to my database instance. So here is my database. The status is available. Now I'm going to click on the connect button, and within few seconds, I'm able to connect to my database. So the second activity in this tutorial is completed. The first, creating a data MS SQL database in AWS. Second, connecting our AWS data cloud database using our SQL Server client management client so this we have already done now let's explore this so since we have connected to a database let's expand the database section and you can see there is something called system database which include master model msdb and tempdb and there's something called rds admin now this is not the database this is the instance of the database that we have created so we have an instance called digital tech join db instance and Inside that we have a database RDS admin which is a system database of AWS. Here you will not have any rights to create tables or execute some scripts. This is a system database that AWS has created by default. However, this is your instance. Now in order to create database, under this instance we will create the database. So we we'll right click on this node and say new database. And enter the database as web db web leads. So this is the database I'm creating web leads, and I'll click on OK. And now I'm able to create a new database within my AWS database instance. And in this database, I will be able to create tables. So I'm going to write a simple script and create one table. And add some records to it. So, in order to create the script, I'm going to select the database that I created, Web Leads, and I'm going to click on File and then New and Query with Current Connection. So, you see the database selected here is Web Leads, and I'm going to create a simple table. I'm going to write a simple script, create table lead details, and I'm going to define the columns. So this is lead ID, which will be int, and which will be a identity column. Then I'm going to say first name should be a varchar hundred, last name varchar hundred, mobile varchar ten. And email I have 150. So this is a columns and this is a script that I've written and I'm going to go ahead and create this table. So I'm going to click on F5 or click on this button execute. So my table is created. So I'll say select all from lead details. So this is a select statement and I can see there's no record added. So I'll write an insert script and I'm going to insert a few records. So I'm going to say insert into lead details and I'm going to say lead ID, first name, last name, mobile, email and the values which I want to insert. So this is one, first name is Rob and last name is James. and then I will say mobile number which will be some numbers and then this will be email rob at the rate yahoo.com 
So I'm just going to select this, click on execute. Okay, so there's issue here, you cannot insert expertise in it. Okay, so this, since this is an identity column, I don't have to provide any value. It will be inserted by default. So I insert this and execute it. I copy this and I paste it and I add one more record. This time I'm going to say Peter. Peter Rex. Okay, and I'm going to change the number. And this will be Peter at the net Yahoo. I'm going to select this and insert this too. So now if I say select all from lead details, I should be able to see these two records. Now this was the second part of a tutorial where we created, connected to our instance, we created the database, we created a table and we also added some record. Now in the third part of this tutorial, I'm going to open ASP.NET and Visual Studio and I'm going to create an ASP.NET MVC application and connect to our cloud AWS database. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've opened Visual Studio 2022 and I'm going to create a new project ASP.NET in ASP.NET MVC. So I click on create new project and I'll select ASP.NET MVC template. So here is already selected ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller and I click on next. Here I'm going to say AWS DB Connect. Okay, so since we are connecting to our database uh, created on AWS, I give that name and I click on next. So I'm selecting framework as 6.0. For now, I'm going to untick configure for HTTP and I click on create. So our default template of project is loaded with the default folders over here. So here, the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to set up the connection string. Now for that, we will go ahead and double click on app setting.js. Here, as I've explained in my several videos, here you can set up the connection string. So in order to establish a connection string, I'm going to add connection string over here and the name of the connection string will be default connection colon and then there will be server sorry server and here in server i'm going to provide that endpoint that i provided for connecting to this database so this is my endpoint and you can copy that endpoint from here also so this becomes my endpoint i copy this in and paste it in the connection string server parameter and here i will also provide the port 1433 so once I've provided that, I will provide the database name. So in this case, my database will be web leads. Okay, and then my integrated security is false because I'm going to provide the username and password so my username will be admin that is user id is admin and my password that i provided while connecting database which is digital 2018 dollar so this is a connection string and i close this so my connection string is set up now once my connection string is set up, I will also will have to add the required model classes to map it against my table and fetch the data and display it in the view. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and add the necessary packages. So we have to add Microsoft since we are working with SQL Server. So we have to add the following parameter packages. So first, let's go to search core. So first we are going to select Microsoft Entity Framework Core. We install this package.
then we want to select the database that will be ms sql sql so here i'm going to select So we are going to use Microsoft Entity Framework SQL Server. We click on Install. So these two packages were required. The second thing we are going to do is that we are going to uh, set up our application DB contest class. So I right click it and I create a database and uh, I create a folder called data. Before that, I'll be creating a model class. So I click on folder. So model folder is already there, so I right click it and create a class. And I name it as lead details entity. So I'm going to define the parameters over here so it will match exactly to in the tables that I've created. So we will have the following parameters lead ID. So we'll have rock tap 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 and say lead id and first name copy that over here and i'm going to name it as last name mobile and email so last name mobile and email so this is our primary key i'm going to add a key. data annotation as key which is defines the primary key so we have defined our entity class now i'm going to go ahead and right click on the data folder that i created and add the application db class so i'm going to name it as application db contest now, application db contest will implement db contest class. Okay, so this is implemented, and I'm, I'm going to add the constructor. So I'm going to click on application db contest, and here I'm going to select and say generate constructor with options. And then I'm going to also define my data set table. So Unspublish db set and i'm going to refer the lead entity details entity and the table name that i given over there was it's lead details so i'm going to keep the same name over here get and set so this is defined we have defined the uh, in, uh, we have defined the connection string and we have defined the table name which is exactly matching to our table defined in a database now let's do go to the program files and add the dependency injection over here so i'm going to say builder dot services dot add db contest and this will be la, our application db contest that i created bracket open options Lambda expression enter options dot option dot use ms use SQL server open the bracket and then use builder dot configuration dot get connection string provide the connection string name which for for which in this case we are giving default connection. So this so the moment the application is loaded it will call this method and then inject that connection string in the db contest class that we have created over here that is required for connecting to a database now let's add a controller that will and a view that will actually load and display the data that we added in our cloud database so we will click on the controller we have a default ohm controller so let us use this controller and display the data from the cloud database so we double click on home controller we have an index method over here so i'm going to 
first declare my application db context class so i say private read only application db context class and i define the giver variable name that is db now it has a own control the own control has a constructor so in this constructor i'm going to pa pass this application db context db and i'm going to initialize this underscore db and database so this gets initialized so my database is initialized now i'm going to use the index and this display the record in the index page which is currently there so if we go to view there is home and there is index so here in this index i'm going to remove everything here and first i'm going to write the code in the home controller so this index page will actually fetch the data and pass on pass it to the view so i'm going to declare an i in variable and i'm going to pass lead entity this will be lead details and here i'm going to call the database variable dot lead details dot to list okay so this is loaded the lead is loaded and then i pass that to the view now in the view i have an html code which i have already saved it i just copy and explain to you so here i have defined the model over here and in an i enumerable i am calling my entity class that is lead details which is right over here lead details which will is the parameters mark, marked over here now after that i have created a small code html code that creates a, a table where i am passing the first name last name mobile and email and i am going to iterate the model and display the first name last name mobile email in a table format so this is a code that will fetch the data connect to our cloud aws database fetch the record that i have added that is two records rob and peter and display it in the view so let us see things in action let's I'm going to load this view now i'm going to run the project And if everything goes well, we should be successfully able to connect our AWS database and fetch the record. Yes, so here we go and we are able to successfully fetch the record from the cloud database. So there are various videos I have provided and in the channel that that also explains how to create the entire crude operation addition deletion fetching of record and uh, modification you can use that videos and then enhance this particular project to include all this functionality so here primarily we saw that we were able to create a database in our aws environment and then a microsoft sql database then connect from a local uh, connectivity tools and then finally create a ESP.NET MVC application that enable to connect the database as well as fetch the record from the database. So I hope guys you like this video. There was a good learning for you. Please do like my channel, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, share with your friends and help me increase this network where I could share knowledgeable tips to all my fellow developers. Thank you for your time.